In terms of mechanical ventilation, so mechanical ventilation is limited to babies with RDAs where other measures have failed and duration should be minimized. So you try to extubate at the earliest. There is no doubt that lung protective strategies like volume targeted ventilation, volume guarantee or high frequency should be the first choice. I'm not sure why they put high frequency as the first option when majority of the units don't use high frequency as the first option. Most of us keep high frequency as a rescue, but with more advancements in high frequency, um, the ability to use at higher frequencies like 12 to 15 hertz and volume targeted high frequency. If you have these facilities, you might start using that as a uh, preferred mode. One of the issues with high frequency is obviously the need for sedation, uh, which it doesn't look uh, right not to sedate these babies while in conventional ventilation in volume targeted modes we get away without any sedation so we still would vote for volume targeted rather than high frequency but if the baby has worsening you can have a low threshold to switch to the newer high frequency modalities especially with volume guarantee when you're weaning from mechanical ventilation it's reasonable to tolerate a modest hypercarbia the threshold to which you accept permissive hypercapnia, especially in the first uh, week to 10 days in the extreme premature babies, should reduce. So uh, anything above 55 to 60 centimeters should be an alarm bell and ideally keep the uh, PCO2 below uh, 50 to 55 where possible. Obviously avoid hypocarbia as well because it has a high risk of PVL. So as long as the pH is maintained above 7.22, you can accept 50 to 55 PCO2. Beyond the first two weeks, you can start accepting more hypercarbia. Hypercarbia has effect on the uh, cerebral perfusion, the risk of IVH is more, and also uh, increased risk of uh, NEC has been shown with hypercarbia as well. BPD risk is more with hypercarbia, strangely. So we can't predict all the responses, so we have to be careful. Nitric oxide in the premature babies is used fairly frequently, but we should be limiting it to a therapeutic trial for those babies where there is documented pulmonary hypertension with severe RDS, especially where there is a setting of uh, PPROM or uh, low amniotic fluid volume. So if you have this setting, you can uh, use the nitric oxide earlier before you go for very high pressure requirements and damage the lung uh, due to that. So you can give a trial in these babies. Of course, as a desperate measure in the babies who are not coping, obviously it has not been really beneficial. Even if you use it, it doesn't make any difference. I'm talking of the 23 or 24 weekers where you're not able to oxygenate them just because of the immaturity. In these cases, nitric oxide doesn't help. Caffeine uh, at a dose of 20 milligram loading and five to 10 milligram maintenance should be used to facilitate weaning from mechanical ventilation. Early caffeine can be considered for babies at high risk of needing mechanical ventilation, such as preterm babies on NIV. So this goes without saying that if the baby is on NIV, you would give the caffeine uh, immediately after birth. And even if the baby continues to be ventilated, we tend to keep them on the caffeine, especially after the result of the CAP study. But if a baby is intubated from the beginning, whether you start caffeine early or you wait when the baby is close to be extubated is uh, still debatable. The uh, you can review my video on apnea of prematurity and the role of caffeine. There is no clear answer. So caffeine should not be taken as a drug totally safe as well. So use it uh, with caution and don't exceed the recommended doses unless you have a clear reason to. An additional uh, loading dose of 10 milligram per kilogram can be given or an intermittent top up dose can be given. But to go more than 10 milligram maintenance is probably not advisable. As the babies grow older, you may have to increase the dose of caffeine due to the pharmacodynamics changing. A short tapering course of uh, low dose dexamethasone, what we call the DART regime, can be considered to facilitate extubation in babies who remain on mechanical ventilation after one to two weeks. So whether you use it at one week or two weeks depends on uh, the gestation of the baby. The smaller babies, you can wait longer. The relatively more mature, like 27, 28 weeks, if they're still ventilated by one week, uh, because you would expect majority of them would be off ventilation by that time, you can use by one week. The babies below 26 or uh, 26 and below, you can consider at two weeks. Opioids should be used selectively when intubated by clinical judgment and evaluation of pain indicators. Routine use of morphine or midazolam in ventilated preterm is not recommended. I fully support this as well and sedation should not be taken lightly. We don't know about the long-term impact on the developing brain. Midazolam causes significant uh, fluid sh uh, shifting 
you get a lot of edema related problems, fluid balance, renal function related problems. So use it for minimal periods only if it is essential.